Thanks for the call. 73 kilowatt 6 Bravo, whiskey QRZ. Victor Echo 7, Victor Charlie Charlie. A team of amateur radio operators attempts to make an HF contact. As one moves away, however, it quickly becomes apparent that this is no ordinary amateur radio station. These radio hams are operating a remote station, and they are participating in what is described as the largest emergency preparedness exercise in North America. This exercise is known to the world as Field Day. Now, Field Day isn't just an emergency preparedness exercise. It, as with many amateur radio events, it encompasses a contest aspect as well. The basic premise behind Field Day is that a station tries to make as many contacts as possible within a 24-hour period. Contacts made using voice communications are worth one point, and contacts made using CW or Morse code are worth two. Victoria, BC's West Coast Amateur Radio Association operates a station on Field Day with the call sign Victor Echo 7, Victor Charlie Charlie. And although they don't do as well as some of the big hot shots in field day, the results are always respectable. Preparation for the weekend's activities begins early. By 8.45 Saturday morning, the field day team is already beginning to assemble. As operators begin unpacking their equipment, the planning stage is about to begin. Possibly the most challenging aspect of field day is the antenna. Because contacts must be made without the use of IRLP or a repeater, the vast majority of the activity takes place on the high frequency bands. These shortwave frequencies allow signals to travel many miles, but require large antenna arrays. The obvious solution, at least for these seasoned radio hams, is to turn to the trees. The concept is simple enough. Several long wires forming the antenna are to be strung up in the tall tree branches. But accomplishing this task is definitely no small matter. It's supposed to be a little electric solenoid here, but I took that off and tapped it and put a... Dave, the E7 DFP, is the inventor of this nifty gadget, known around town as the bazooka. The device is made from PVC pipe and a sprinkler valve. The bazooka is first charged to about 40 PSI using an air compressor. Then, at the touch of a button, whatever is sitting inside the main pipe can be launched with great force out of the end. This gadget makes setting up long wire antennas a snap, as Dave can attach a length of fishing line to a weighted tennis ball sitting inside the barrel. The tennis ball can be launched up high over the top tree branches, taking the fishing line with it. Once the ball falls to the ground, all that is left to do is to cut off the tennis ball and attach a length of cord to the fishing line. In as little as 15 minutes, you've got a ready-made antenna support. After the ropes have been readied, the wire antennas are laid out on the ground. The plan is to have two major high-frequency antennas, a long wire for CW or Morse code contacts, and a large delta loop antenna for the voice communications. A third random wire antenna is put up this year for experimental purposes. Uh, hold that for a second just so that we can get this straight because now we're over it. So. There are times when the club members work like a well-oiled machine. Everybody seems to know their place, and everyone is kept busy with the job. It's amazing to think that the vast majority of this antenna setup was completed in less than two hours. Finally, the last antenna is pulled up into position, and the final setup can begin. Once the radio station assembly begins, folks begin to filter over until nearly the entire field day crew is watching with keen interest as Alan and others connect the radios. Before long, Wara can finally begin to make some contacts. Anybody uh, wanting to make contact for Field Day? This is Victor Echo 7, Victor Charlie Charlie. In addition to the high frequency band, Wara will be operating on 2 meters as well as 6 meters. However, due to the limited range of these bands, not much activity is expected to take place on these VHF frequencies. After the frenzied activities of the morning come to a halt, the entire event takes on a more relaxed feel. Folks are able to lounge about and talk about radio or other hobbies of interest, and some pets are even brought out. While all this is happening, of course, there is the ever-present murmur of the radio, meaning that contacts are always being made. By late Sunday morning, most of the station breakdown has been completed. 
By 10 o'clock, only the voice antenna and radio are operational, and the majority of contacts has been made. Because field day participants can only operate a station for 24 hours, the Wara team makes their final contact about 10.55 before calling it officially over. Now, by the end of the weekend, Wara made over 300 contacts, 98 of which were on CW, giving them a total of over 400 points. 75 people or more showed up over the course of the weekend to participate in the field day activities, and when you consider that Wara is a club that typically has fewer than 30 members showing up for the monthly meetings, it makes this total seem that much more impressive. Now, the total number of contacts was down a little bit from previous years, however, I would still have to say that Field Day 2010 was a resounding success. For INET, this is Christopher reporting.